Welcome, I'm John Moore, Head of Grounds and Gardens at Churchill College and uh, welcome to our tour of the new perimeter path that we created this summer. Thought first of all though we would start off by looking at the, some of the trees that we've got to plant this year as we're planting nearly 90 trees. As you can see we've got various trees behind us with uh, which are the, uh, the crab apples so we've got all these ones here with the nice red berries we've also got ones with the yellow berries further up so we're going to have quite a good show as we go along and as we go around the path I'll be showing you where we're going to plant them and if you pan around on the with the camera you can see all the various other trees crab apples we've got the circus here going through to the taxodium which is a swamp cypress at the end which is the, the conifer here's a series of aerial photographs which gives you the orientation of where the path is the original path started at the bottom of the college and worked its way up past the pavilion and muller center and terminated when it reached the chapel since then this year we have now created a new path that goes from the chapel all the way around to cowan court so you can now do a complete circle so we're now on the uh, original path that runs from the bottom of the college up to the chapel and as we come up this road here up the path here you'll find that there's old trees all the way down it on each side lining it and we're hoping as we go around we're going to plant more trees to tree line the path if we look to the left this side here you can see the rather nice cedars and the one just the other side of the goalpost the cedar there was planted by Sir Herman Bondy one of the masters the one just there so we're going to start on our walk and we're basically going to get onto our new path as it just starts here heading up towards the chapel I think we will as we come up past the chapel we're going past what's the uh, copse area of the of the college where we have all the all the daffodils and the snowdrops so we have 22,000 daffodils that were planted in the in this area and there are thousands and thousands of snowdrops that uh, come up all around the bank and along the banks as you look into the copse area we have planted it in different areas so we started off with the uh, cornice trees which give you the fantastic bracts which are more modified leaves than uh, flowers but they get whites and pinks once they've come over or moved over just there, um, you can move into the aces all the uh, ja all the sort of Japanese maples and we've got quite a collection of these through here so you get all the different colors the reds and the oranges and we've just seen earlier the snake bark maples that you've got which are going to be planted shortly it then moves through through this area into the magnolias and then this area here we're going to be planting a lot more trees so you feel more enclosed as you're walking through a pathway sort of tree lined as we go past the chapel one of the other nice parts about this path is actually you can see through the windows into the chapel and you can actually see the john piper stained glass windows just about So as we walk along the path here we tried to make it into a sweeping path we didn't want to have straight lines we wanted it to, to say curve through following the boundaries we want to obviously plant as much as we can along the side along this stretch here we've got the rugby pitch that comes quite close to the path so unfortunately we cannot plant any more trees this side but uh, once we get round the corner we're going to have more planting again as we look towards Cowan Court this way you've got the really nice Le sort of golden leaves of the uh, silver lime and then a nice beech tree to the left just near the chapel which is looking really good at the autumn colour at the moment with the cedars behind them and as you look further that toward past the limes you can see the new sculpture that's just been put in and the silver limes uh, silver maple sorry that have the new sculpture in there and plenty of mistletoe in all the trees So the path now slowly curls round and through the trees again we wanted it to feel that in the summer uh, that it's a, a, a sort of dappled shade as you walk through it so you're not out in the full sun and again we've got recessed areas coming up here where we can plant more trees we'd like to try and do as we have the cedar area over that uh, where we came from originally we then like in this area to be planting a few pines because the original designs were supposed to be that the college had a surrounding of evergreen trees so we want to do we have the cedars at one point we want the pines here 
further round we want to come to uh, an area of sequoias and then we'll go further round again and we'll get to an area of taxodium. But as you can feel now, the, the sort of niceness of just walking through a, a dappled shade area and again, once you're up here you're at the highest point of the college land and you get a fantastic view through into the college of Cowan Court and various other areas beyond. So as we carry on along the path, you can see as it, it snakes its way through the trees and you can look slightly to the, to the end over there, you can see people walking along our path here. It's proved hugely popular. We're seeing each day many people walking along this path, which is a really real great pleasure to actually see people using it. Um, as I say, again, we're going back under some more silver maples and again, more mistletoe above us as we, uh, as we look up into the tree, uh, which is a sign of good quality air. So as we continue round the path, we're heading towards what's affectionately been called compost corner over the years now. So this was the area that we built all our compost areas using the waste soil from the Cowan Court project and the Muller Centre extensions. And as you can see, there's the nice big banks here with huge compost bins inside, which you can't see. So they're absolutely fantastically shade, you know, sheltered and uh, out of sight. We're now getting to the back of the rugby pitch and this is the point where we'll start the major tree planting. So we have got along this bit here, we've got, we're going to have the start of what we're going to call our crab apple tree walk. We have 33 crab apple trees with seven different varieties that will be going in. So up this side, we will have two different varieties, five of each on this top area. And it will basically mean, we'll, as we're going down this area, we'll have the flowers in the spring, we'll then get the various foliage types, some of them have got red foliage, some are green, we'll have, as I say, the flowers, and then we'll go into this autumn where we'll get the fruit, which will hopefully hold on through the winter before feeding the wildlife, and then we'll have, uh, as I say, just the autumn colour as well. So this will be a, a really nice area and something to be able to walk along and uh, feel enclosed, because at the moment we're slightly more open to the elements, not having the trees here, Whereas when you go through most of the areas, we are sort of feeling enclosed in trees and it has that sort of more woodland field, which is what we're wanting to, to create as we're going along. Uh, yes. And then as we get towards the back of the football pitch here, we're intending to widen our tree bank that we have along this side to take it out towards the football pitch to thicken up our area of trees again. This is the area where we're looking to plant some sequoias in this area. These get quite large, but we have the space to hold it. And again, it just gives us that extra feeling of this evergreen trees, which was actually what was quite intended at the beginning, of the, at the beginning when they uh, originally did the designs by Sheila Haywood, the college landscape architect. So we will, as I say, have the cedars, the pines, the sequoias in this area. So this will be something that's really nice. Again, here we go through the London plane trees and we've managed to just weave the path straight through the middle of them so you feel that you're really in a little woodland area as you're going through. We then come along as we get through this area to our sort of boundary along Maddingley Road where we have our hedge that we've only, we only planted probably 10 years ago, which is uh, native field maple, which has really formed into a nice hedge now. Uh, again, this was the original sort of builder's road that runs along the path. And this is where we have a long straight where we have no trees between Maddingley Road and the college and the path. So this is again, we're going to have a load of the crab apple trees that will run the length of this area. So again, you'll feel that you're walking between trees with trees either side. So you'll have the limes this side, the crab apples, you're going to the plains. We're going to then equally where we've got gaps here in the, in the tree belt, we will be planting new trees in here to thicken it up again. And we'll make the whole area just feel like a, a woodland walk as you're going through. These are original trees above us here, the, the silver, uh, silver willow trees were planted in 1960 
They've done rather well. They were supposed to have been taken out according to the original plans after 10 years as they were only planted as a, as a nurse crop to try and bring up the other broadleaf trees that were planted around them because they wanted them to grow quick and uh, straight and these were supposed to give instant uh, growth but were never taken out um, and so 60 years later they're still huge. We have to trim them and prune them to keep them safe but they're still doing really well. We've got one further down which will be pruned this year that we've not done before but we're going to this shortly in the next few weeks have it pruned to make it a bit safer. We're then going through past all the, the beech trees here which have got some fantastic autumn colour. Again we intend in this both sides of the path is to let the grass grow long so again you're feeling woodlandy and you're feeling like you're in a sort of almost a meadow feel as you're going along. We're now just sort of slowly coming up to one of the, 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 uh, the final of the original willow trees which you can see is quite huge with mistletoe in it, the sort of big silver leaf one. This one will be pruned because it's got a little bit, quite a bit of dead wood in it and it's in danger of branches coming down so this will be sorted out in the next uh, few weeks. We've got a company coming to do the work. We then go back to limes again but again we'll be able to plant underneath this tree and around it so when this eventually does go we'll have trees that are ready to take its place and uh, fill the gap. Again once we've walked along this path it now starts to curve back in and we've managed to go through the trees and through the limes heading towards the tennis courts again taking us a bit further away from Maddingley Road which is nice so we don't get as much much noise I was just about to say as the fire engine arrives um, and as we go through here we're wanting to do as well is have uh, we want to have some benches and various areas for people to sit and more planting and this is an area that we're looking at here we've got areas back as we came along that will have bench have benching so that people can actually just walk along and have a destination to get to and they feel that there's actually a reason to walk out not just a circle it, they're going to be able to walk around, sit down, enjoy the different views, have peace and quiet in different parts of the college. To the right here we have two more of the original willows that have been pollarded over many years. They're unfortunately rather rotten so these two are going to come down shortly and then when here we've got some really nice taxodiums which is a swamp cypress, it's a very wet area and they will really enjoy that. They look like the metasequoia uh, which we have in the master's garden but they're just slightly different where they have leaves that are alternate rather than opposite. These will do really well in here. Then beyond that we're going to be planting the cut leaf alder which will fill in the next area. This will give us great age diversity because we want, as long as you're walking along, we're wanting to make sure that we always have age diversity in our trees because there, was no, there weren't any trees on this site pre-1960 so they were all planted around that time and over the years they planted different trees at different times. We need to make sure that we're constantly planting trees throughout the years so that we never have a point where we just lose lots at once. So this is something really important but you can see on this tree here how it's cracked and it's starting to rot which is why we have to take it out because before we could leave it, it, wasn't, it, was, it was bad, it won't, probably won't fall down yet but now we've put a path here it becomes more of a danger because people are walking this area whereas before people weren't so now we have to take much more care of this area with the trees so this is about to go soon. The purple leaf tree that we're just coming up to is one called Acer Crimson King. This one was planted in 1977 by Captain Roskill so one of the sort of historic trees for the college uh, that was donated. We sort of, as I say, hopefully we'll have more trees in this area here so it will give us a bit more shielding from Maddingley Road. And as we come along this path, we're then going to hit, come in towards Cowan Court and we've just planted uh, 12 Circes trees of different varieties. Michael Cowan's wife, she planted one of them uh, at the back, which is Texan White. And we have various other ones in there. So we have, a, we have white flowering versions, we have pink flowering and we have the mauve all different varieties, well three, three of each varieties here and then another three groups of another three varieties further around. So this will be quite a nice area. We've mounded it up a bit more to make it feel like it's more of a mound 
we're at the process at this point of building a new fire road so hopefully soon this will all be greened over we'll have the new surface on the fire road and then people will just be able to continue from the the perimeter path onto the fire road which will then take you around and into the college so we've now walked the entire length of the new perimeter path i hope you've enjoyed the walk and uh, some of the highlights along it and actually some of the highlights that are still to come